All right, how are you doing? It is a new week and of course a new month. Fresh guests right here on the show once again. And as always, the show is called One on One and my name, as always, is Eugene Anangwe. And of course, this week, we're going to be looking at various issues and host different personalities that shape the news agenda in the country. My guest today is none other than Frank Havineza. He is the leader of the Democratic Green Party of Rwanda. Welcome to One on One. Thank you very much. Eh? Today, to for approximately 30 minutes, we're going to be looking into what is your manifesto? What do you have for Rwandans? When you talk about the opposition, what exactly are you opposing? Maybe we'll start from there. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, well, we, we, we're opposing, first of all, uh, government policy. Uh, we make it clear that we don't oppose individuals or personalities, mm -hmm. but policies uh, which, as a party, we think are not right, mm -hmm. or are not correct, uh, they, we analyze them and we oppose them. So we managed to, um, <coughs> to put up a, a, a political program where we highlighted several issues, maybe about 15 of them, and uh, that was like a, a kind of the main line that we are taking. But that's not where we stop only. Mm -hmm. We also uh, look at the day-to-day -day activities of the state, yes. or the of the government. If there's something that is uh, not going right, then we can tackle it uh, as it comes. Mm. <laughs> as it comes, as yeah. it comes. Yes, yeah. Because one would wonder, mm. and most of your critics always say that, look at the track record of the government of Rwanda today. Mm. Look at the policies that uh, the government has come with to help alleviate Rwandans from poverty. Yes. You know, improve education system, security, and of course the environment for business, for doing business in the country. And therefore, leaving us to wonder, what exactly then are you opposing? Because you say we oppose government policies. Which ones? Okay, we have analyzed, like, for example, uh, the education policy. Mm -hmm. Uh, during the course of last year, I think we had enough time to talk about it. That we saw that uh, there is a problem in education policy whereby there is a how, how do you call it? Uh, lack of uh, good quality. We don't have good quality education. Why? Uh, the main problem is because of the language barrier. Uh, Rwanda, a few years ago, let's say from 97, 98, they adopted the language policy of bilingualism, where they encouraged all Rwandans to be well conversant in French and, uh, and in English. Mm -hmm. At that time, I had a chance when I was at university to study French. So we, uh, at first, there was uh, some resistance to that, but we uh, finally went on, got on board and we welcomed that. But then a few years later, uh, the policy again changed, and then French was put aside, and then they introduced it. They said, now English is going to be the language of instruction, both in schools and in government business. When you look at that, there, was, there are people who have suffered the consequences, especially the children, the, the pupils, the students. Because most of the teachers we have, they have been educated in, or trained in French. So now you, you tell them, you give them two months training in holidays mm -hmm. and tell them to teach now in English. They can't do it right. So you find that because of that, they cannot transfer the knowledge they have to the students properly. And that has caused problems in the quality. Because you say quality, many will tell you that quality is relative. It is a very broad, uh, you know, statement because quality for me might not be good quality for you, and so they would want to understand what exactly do you mean it, by it means low quality of education yes, in the country? It means that people graduate mm -hmm. where they don't have the proper skills, and uh, I think this has, was expressed even by the private sector. And the reason for you, the you private believe sector, say that uh, that students graduate, say from Kisto, mm -hmm. from Well, from Butare, but d you find that they. They are graduates, they have diplomas, but they, are, they don't know what they are doing. And that is because of language barrier, yeah, according to that, you? That, exactly. That's one of the biggest problems we have. Because we think that there's a good curriculum, uh, we have good teachers, but the teachers cannot transmit their message because of language barrier. And yet, this is a constitutional issue, because we have Article 5 of the Constitution, which says that Rwanda has three official languages, English, French, and Kenya Rwanda. So we find that uh, the case of putting one language aside is a problem. So actually, recently, we have taken this case to the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. uh, because we, found with, with, uh, we, we had believed that it's a constitutional issue, whereby French had been put aside, and even in other sectors of life. Uh, and for the Supreme Court threw out our case, and uh, we are planning to take it to the High Court here. Yeah. Mm. So basically, uh, that's a big challenge. It's one problem which brings us our problems. But again, in the democratic sector, there was a problem with the bursaries, students' bursaries. Maybe before we go to bursaries, let's stick first to the language issue, because the policy itself, there are some reasons that were put behind it. Mm. And partly you'd, 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 you'd want to put things into perspective. Number one, 
the issue of using English mm. as a language of instruction, mm. look at Rwanda today amassing itself into other regional blocks. For example, the Commonwealth, where English is a very main language that mm. is used. Mm. The East African community, where again, English is a, a language that most people are using. Yes. Don't you think then that there was more logic in turning and saying, you know what, let's not stick to French. Let's, no, let's do we, English and we, we be able believe. to communicate with our <laughs> brothers and sisters out we there. We believe that the government of Rwanda should stick to the bilingualism policy. Mm -hmm. That benefits everybody, but not a monolingualism policy of promoting English and leaving French aside. So we think that bilingualism benefits everyone because the majority of those who are educated in this country, most of them, uh, those who came from Burundi, who came from Congo, those who are born here, and so on, they're all educated in, basically in French, they're trained in French. Mm -hmm. So we find that the big chunk of population uh, could uh, have problems, even uh, lose their basic human rights, uh, rights because of that of uh, whatever. So we think that yes, we are in Commonwealth, very good. We are in East African community, very good. But we are also in La Francophonie. We are also in Sepeger, where we have uh, Burundi and Congo. We are also in the Central African states. Uh, the Prime Minister recently uh, applied that Rwanda should join again. Mm -hmm. And we also have permanent missions in Senegal, uh, in Gabon, uh, in uh, Brazzaville, where they only speak one language, which mm -hmm. is French. So mm -hmm. basically, Rwanda has nothing to lose by sticking to the body policy and we as a party we are going to fight for that that so that the court can order the government to stick to bilingualism and stop promoting monolingualism but when you pick when you pick the issue of of, of the languages and make it look like the way it was yes. some people feel like you're being petty no it's not petty because we have let's say maybe three million people who are, don't have access to jobs because of bilingualism we have many students who are graduating they cannot perform well because of the language and we have even young kids who are being educated but they are like confused because they cannot I think we can have good results maybe after like it's almost a whole generation which is going to suffer and they are Rwandans they are citizens we need to have them on board and as I said we benefit more from having bilingualism than having than promoting one language mm. English is good I myself was educated in English, uh, but I know that, uh, for example, I have an office in Burkina Faso, and in Burkina Faso, no one speaks English. Mm -hmm. if, the, even if you can speak like Shakespeare, no one will understand you. Mm -hmm. So actually, they told him that you, your bad French is better than your good English. Mm -hmm. So basically, that's the reality. So we benefit more from by promoting bilingualism. But when you say that that so they it's are not promoting a petty, it's one, a big it, you issue. insist it's a yes. big issue. Yes. But when you say that um, mm. they are promoting one language, who is this that is that is promoting one language? We have a policy. We have seen the education policy here uh, from the High Council of Education, mm -hmm. which was uh, which is written that is saying that uh, from now on they have to promote to use in English and that's language of instruction. We also have a, a cabinet. Does degree. that say that stop using French? In yes. Schools? Well, Does they, that say don't they, teach children French? Does that say don't teach them Kenya Rwanda? The directive was taken by the cabinet. I think some some sometime uh, in 2008 or nine, but I have the details. The cabinet sat down and that directive that from now on they're going to promote uh, English. So by the time when the cabinet made that decision, things changed immediately in the government service and everywhere. Uh, unfortunately, uh, while the Supreme Court threw out our case, mm -hmm. the, the, the cabinet took a decision but they did not make a law. Uh, so people follow the policy, mm -hmm. but th though it's not a law that is uh, uh, came out to say that French should not be used, but the policy is there. It was made by the cabinet and was published in the official gazette of the government. We have it, and the High Council of Education also made the same policy. So those are the things that we are opposing because we think they are not uh, in support of the majority of the Rwandans or in the interest of the Republic of Rwanda. But it was kicked out. We it will come back. We are going to ask the court to order them to bring it back. And if it doesn't. Uh, we will uh, seek other remedies. Like which one? Uh, of course, there are many other avenues. Uh, the court is not the only avenue. Yeah. Like which one? Well, uh, uh, I think one of those will seek an audience with the president. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, what do you expect him to tell you? I think President is the first person in this country who has sworn to respect the constitution. Mm -hmm. So I, we, 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 we can. I think he, he will uh, respect the constitution. You think he will respect? Yeah, because he's, he's the first, first the, the, the senior citizen, the first senior citizen who has sworn to protect 
the constitution. So we will, even if the Supreme Court threw it out, mm -hmm. that's not constitutional, but we know, of course, that it's a constitutional issue. And uh, if the High Court throws it out, there will be other avenues. I will not say everything maybe at this moment, but as time goes on, we will think about other avenues. Yeah. Mm. Yes. But the most important thing is to understand that the judiciary is independent. Whether you go to the president, uh, and if the judiciary has just said that this is the situation, it sticks. Yes. So why now, would you now, go to the president? Now we, uh, we have gone to the judiciary. But we believe that the courts of Rwanda uh, will do their job. So that's why we have not thought so many of other avenues. But one of them is that the, the, the man who is supposed to make sure that the constitution is respected in Rwanda is the president. So if he, he can also see that if the judiciary is not working well, though the judiciary is independent, but we can also uh, petition him. But do you think that if he was to do anything by now in your line of thinking, mm. you would have done it? I, I think it's not yet too late. It's not yet too late here. Yeah. And I think uh, countries, uh, people make mistakes, but uh, mistakes are collected. What is bad is that you know you have made a mistake, I don't want to collect it. That is, would be the worst problem. So you insist that the choice of making English as a language of instruction was a wrong choice? It, it is a not appropriate choice. We think bilingualism, promoting both languages, is the best choice. Mm -hmm. Yes. What is that you're opposing? Oh, well, we, when we go from there, of course, we have talked other issues like uh, other than education, we have gone to economy. We found that there are, there's a problem of uh, high taxes. Uh, the taxation policy, there's something wrong with it. People, uh, they say, is it escaping or running away from this country? Uh, those people who are being uh, taxed, the small businesses, you have heard they've gone to Malawi, they've gone to Zambia, they've gone to Uganda. Some of them, even we know them, they say that the taxes is too much. So we think that uh, the Rwanda Revenue Authority, and maybe the Minister of Finance, they mm -hmm. should sit down and see how they can make the succession policy more favorable to the small businesses. But also, um, we also promote progressive taxation as a pattern, but we think that uh, uh, they, they, there should be also incentives for the small business so that they can keep in business. Frank, let's be, let's be very practical in, in even the way we answer. For example, that issue of taxation. Let's say that you, let's imagine that you are in office. How would you have dealt with it then? How differently would you have dealt with it? When you say we, we want them to sit together and talk, okay, talk and say what? And, and agree on what? Because me, if I was in office, and I see that businessmen are running out of the country, I'll look at the root cause of that problem. Why but are you've already people? said it's because of tax. Yeah, I'm not in the government, how are so you we gonna, are telling them. How are you going to deal with it? Yes, we have, we have actually put it in our protocol program that they should stop uh, the, the taxation policy they have and change it maybe to a progressive. To which one? Progressive be, taxation Be practical. Progressive. Which one? No, we have stopped, we have written actually progressive taxation. But also, we what is progressive taxation for those who don't understand? We what think you're that saying. someone should be taxed according to his income, but he should not be taxed more than what you earn. So if they, if you find that you have a small business, they are charging you VAT 18 percent. They bring another taxi, maybe three percent. They bring another, one. so you find that uh, in, on your whatever you have to pay more than 35 percent of, of taxes. And then if you count on the income you have put in, then you are just making losses. That's why people just cross business. It happens. It's happening. Yeah. So we think that, uh, yes, we encourage that uh, people should pay taxes. But look, uh, what are those taxes really promoting business or they are uh, deep or they are making things worse? So at this moment, we think, and you have seen, actually, that even they, they have said it, uh, even the, uh, the Minister of Finance, they, they were not even able to reach their targets. Even last year, the, the Rwanda Revenue Authority were not able to reach their targets because they put so much high targets and uh, much taxes, and people, they could not pay. So they were not, they, they felt, um, I think it's, it was said about five billions or whatever, which was not being able to be So you feel yet. they failed to reach the targets because people are not able to, to pay, because to they pay are that tax or because people are evading taxes? People are there, could be evading taxes, but also they are escaping the country because of taxes and because the Revenue Authority has put up unrealistic targets. So, targets. so let them sit down together, put realistic targets, see the tax base of the people they are taxing. You, you should tax people, but also encourage them to do business, but not to cross down business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you'll find even the big businesses, uh, they also reach a time whereby they, they, would, they will be the one paying more, and they will have to cross down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you find that we shall have, uh, I think soon, we shall have, uh, how do you call them, these investors who come, and they have incentives to work for five years, but after five years, they sell off their shares, and they run away, because they don't want to pay the taxes. So we shall reach into that situation whereby we get investors coming here, just for a short holiday, they have those tax holidays, then they run away. Mm -hmm. Because when they find that the taxes, the, uh, the taxation policy is not good. So mm -hmm. there, the country is not going to be moving forward. Because yeah. most people always say that in situations 
times where we have opposition, mm. there's always also putting things into perspective mm. and asking themselves, all right, fine, what other alternative are these people giving us? Yes. What 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 other way or you know reasoning are they giving us? Because today, if I was to ask yeah. you, look at the economy of the country. Just mm. recently, the central bank governor announced the financial statement of the country, yes. and the economy seems to be growing seven, over seven percent growth. <laughs> but uh, maybe it's growing uh, for him. But is it really growing in the villages? Is it, are the people really having seeing that growth? Mm -hmm. This is the question. Mm. We may see Kigali growing. Yes, Kigali is growing. Kigali is dropping, but uh, other cities also growing, and the people in the villages, they are down in Mutara, uh, they are down in Chibungo, in uh, Jitarama, uh, in are they, uh, are they, is, do you see that? We don't see that. So we, uh, actually it may even be uh, economic figures manipulation, you never know, because we are not so are, you, are you really trying to say on this show that they're manipulating the figures? It is possible. That they're manipulating the figures to make it look like the they, economy is growing? They may want growing. to please the president, show him that things are going well, but in reality things are not going very well, because when you see they are talking about seven percent growth, but when you, you know that's a people, very serious allegation. Oh no, this is a very simple thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. You know these economist people, the statisticians, they can make figures like this, and you think things are very good. But when uh, we have the other people in this country, you know when the mayors talk about this Imigo thing, they tell us they tell us about how they have progressed ninety mm -hmm. percent, ninety nine percent. But when people go there, there's a big group of delegation which goes to verify. You find that actually the mayors were just let's lying. talk facts. Yeah, when it is has true. that that happened here in Rwanda? Uh, okay, maybe I was not prepared to talk about Let's the have facts because it's important. Because it's impo <laughs> there's no need of coming and saying, yes. ah, they're saying this. No, no, no. This. Uh, Let's talk facts. Yes. What is also stopping you from yes. putting up a team yes. that would verify what they're saying and I'm know that it is true or not true? Actually, I'm going to do that. You've seen that. You're going to do that, but look, why? why look at the, for it? example, here mm -hmm. in Gasabo, they put up those higher targets and so on. And when they come, you remember last time, the mayors were saying that we have done, we have done this, we have done this. And then at the end of the day, well, these people were giving marks. They realized that he was not doing. They were not doing the same thing. Actually, that's why some of these mayors, like Mayor of Gasau, had to resign. Look, I think there were other cases. Uh, is it in Rwamagana? Uh, so these cases have been happening here. But I give you now an example of Gasau. Go and verify. They, they, they were always making good pictures, good images that things are progressing. But actually, when in reality, it was not the case. But that, that, that's one thing that you just touched on. But you've talked of so many things that mm. you feel the numbers are being cooked yes. to make the picture look good and to please the president in yes. your own words. Yes. But where is the fact about that statement? So I've already given that example. And I, I will once again say that there is economic figures you see about growth, about development. Uh, we, we, they should say that where we have high growth in the city, capital city, which we agree. And um, But in the villages, people, they still need to be, we still need to move people out of poverty. People still living in poor, poverty mm -hmm. and also we have a big uh, uh, problem of uh, um, fewer people uh, having bigger income yes. I think you saw there was a report uh, that came out uh, was it from, uh, is it Trademark East Africa or something? I, I, I'm, I'm not remembering which, uh, which organization put up that report. But where they say that, uh, that at least 45% uh, uh, of the national economy is owned by 5% of the population. So that report came out, I think, last year. I would just have to verify which organization put up that. So meaning that we have more Rwandans who are poor and very few, uh, that 5%, which owns almost half of the country. And unfortunately, some of, the, of these people owning, they are owning it, uh, this country mm -hmm. through corrupt means. Uh, yes, they, they are using corruption. They are, they are not do, doing what they should be doing, but uh, they use uh, corrupt means to own up whatever they own, and actually they are not serving the people. You have who? had cases. Like who? Like who? Had, the 5% that you say had, are owning things because of corruption. Let me give you an example. Recent cases of these mayors who have just resigned in uh, uh, Lusizi, is it in a... Uh, there are about five mayors who resigned this and Do they had, own the country, as you no, said, 5%? But, but I'm, I'm giving you an example of how... They, they, of course, they eat government money or people's money. And when they eat government money, they save money from the $12, Sante, they end up buying houses and uh, they end up giving good cars and good things like that. And you, that one, is, it includes this growth rates. You see, these are some of these figures going up, but at the expense of the people, expense of the citizens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So In most cases, corruption, the people who are corrupt or people who have been alleged to have been, uh, you know, acquired uh, resources illegally or misused funds, mm -hmm. 
mm. have always been, you know, either relieved of their duties or arrested, yes. whether they're big officials or not officials, yes. no, no, not big officials. Then, when you say yes, mm. then that means the government of the day is yes. doing a good thing. It doesn't mean it's not happening. It means but that it, it's it happening. It means the government of the day is doing their job well. But sometimes it so, takes so long. So where, where, is, where is your problem? The problem is this. Why does it take so long for the, uh, for the officials to know that there's something wrong going on? So we think that it's until when people have seen someone building a mansion or having a flat that they start asking, oh, where did you get that money for that flat? Mm. Why don't they see it in advance that there's something going wrong? How differently would you see it? What would I, you I mean, use to see it ad, uh, in advance? How I different would the you state, do it? The state, uh, the state has mechanisms, has organs. The, those organs uh, should increase the, their capacity and investigate more and see if uh, these targets people have uh, committed to, they are being implemented and they are taking place in the right time. There should be also the issue of timing. And then if there's something wrong going on, people should immediately see that and start realizing that this something is not going to be right uh, tomorrow. But you don't wait until you see someone has bought a Land Cruiser or has built a mansion. Then you say that, where did you get that money? Then you start putting that person in prison. And actually sometimes uh, it is too late. None of these people. The people will be dying those who have not got their None success. of these none people mm. none of these people who have either resigned mm. or who have been arrested mm. for being corrupt mm. or who are being alleged to be corrupt yeah. have been reported by you or your your, your, no, your party. Actually, actually, what, what then are you doing? No, 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 no. We, <laughs> we, we. Uh, there was an Otters General's report. Actually, Otters General is. Yes, but that's not the Green Party. That's not you. The Green Party so the government, is not government. And its organs no. are doing their job. Uh, don't you think? The Democratic Green Party of Rwanda is not a government. Yes, we are not in the government. Yes, we don't have. Uh, but you're sort of like a watchdog. Uh, yes, but to we don't help have the same identify resources. these things. Yes, we can look. We see. Sometimes we get information from other state organs. Let's say like Auditor General, like um, um, uh, yes, um, Vuni, um, Dusman, and things like that. We can get information, but we don't have the same mechanism like uh, Auditor General, like Revenue Authority, or others uh, who can investigate those things. So basically, not until maybe we are in government we can have those resources. But at this moment, we also depend on the media. If the media has put some things, then we can also see that the media has investigated this issue. So you're here. taking a back seat and waiting for no, others we to are not do taking for you to amplify the noise not about that it. Not that we Of course, we are also doing our own research. Like which we one? But Which research are you doing today? Well, we have been, uh, for example, if you have not been uh, updated. Mm -hmm. uh, Update me, please. Tell yes. me. We, we, this from actually from last year, after we got our registration, we have been putting up efforts to establish ourselves on the ground, putting up structures. So you're still building yourself? Of course. We are a new party. We are a young party, which is less than two years old. So we are putting up structures. Now we have established ourselves at least in eight districts. Actually, uh, last week we finished uh, with uh, one district in the North Burera and one in Rusizi in Changugu. So we, when we have all those structures, we believe that the people on the ground will be easy to report whatever is going wrong mm -hmm. to, to us. So that's the way we can perform better. So this is where we're putting all our energy, making sure that we have structures on the ground. Mm -hmm. Then we will know the people's problems. Because sometimes we may depend on media or depend on the other reports, but they may not be properly verifiable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then, you say your party is still young. Not less than two years, you say? Yes. And then we are now in 2015. Mm -hmm. We're heading towards 2017, the much talked about here of, of, of of possible elections in the country. Now, does that then put you out because you say that you're still young? How can the country entrust you yes. or entrust their whole economy mm. and resources and all the growth that they've had over the last 20 years to a young party that is just less than three years old? A, a, a party is like a human being. Every, every, every living thing let me say now it's a living thing, mm -hmm. has a time where it gets born. So we are part of established in 2009, but we got legal recognition in 2000. Uh, 13. Mm -hmm. So we spent four years without having official recognition. Mm -hmm. So we are, we, we are young legally, but we are not as that But young you just said you still don't have the resources, you still yes, don't have the people, because legally, you're still not yet legally. well connected no, 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 to, to do this say thing. That, no. so, so, so how will you do <laughs> this? I mean, you're still a baby, you say, in no, your own words. No, I'm exaggerating it. I'm, I'm saying that we don't have the same resources like established parties which have been there for 20 years, and uh, we don't have structures yet uh, in every uh, district. We don't have yet people in local government structures or in parliament. But we'll be there. Even RPF was not like that. It was at one time like us, but now it's somewhere different here. So there's no reason that we should lose hope. We know we are, of course, going to compete in these elections. We are going to compete in 2017 elections. We shall compete in the parliamentary elections in 2018. We shall also present candidates for the senators' elections in 2019. We are going to do that. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and as I say, it's a process. 
it's a process we believe we will win some of those elections maybe we will not win all of them but we shall win yeah but you seem because not optimistic already no why no. you know a person who's optimistic says yeah. we will win all of them but then look at yourself you're no. saying that you are not you, you you will win some of them maybe we'll not win some of them no, because this how is, can people then if you go to a football match this country? if you go to a football match uh -huh. you are two teams let's say you are lions paul and you are appel mm -hmm. one of the two teams has to win but it does not mean that you stop competing because you are, you're not sure you are the one who's going to win. Mm -hmm. You go when you know you are going to win. Okay. But there's a possibility that you will not win. So, but if you only go think that you are going to win 100 percent and not have that reservation, then you may even commit suicide if you don't win. Mm. So we we go in prepared for the the best and the worst. You get my point here. But what we are saying, what we are committing to you is that we have uh, at least uh, even though legally we are less than two years old, but we have have that experience from 2009. And not only that, we also have other people who have been uh, in politics in our party more than that period, who, are, who, are more, who have more experiences than that. So I think it's a matter of time of putting more things together and also looking to the perspective of where things are going. Mm. So we, we, we are not scared of anything. Would you be the presidential uh, candidate for your party the in party 2017? The party has not decided yet who is going to be the candidate. But what we have decided upon is that we shall present the candidates, a candidate for the presidential election. Come on, give us some leakage. Who's going to be the presidential candidate? Not you know, it's Tell just us. The, the matter of who words. you know your people, you lead them, you've been with them from two or nine, you've been with them for these years, you're growing. At least you know someone. Come on, tell me a name. No, no, no. I, I tell me a name, even a if it is you, just say there's a procedure uh -huh. which will be followed to confirm a presidential candidate. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that procedure will be done um, when the time is approaching in the right period. So do you, you think know. you'll manage? I, beg your I mean, as a party, do you think your candidate will, Why will triumph? Why not? We have what it takes. Okay, there is yes. what it takes, yes. and there is also the issues for the people. The I mean, let's talk of let, let's let's talk of the economy. Yes. For example, yes. this growth that we've seen going on that you sort of not seem to agree with, but what are you going to do to keep it up there? There are investors who keep coming to the country. Today you hear that uh, you know there is an investor A who has come to invest in the country. Uh, tomorrow there's a delegation from Germany coming in to come and look at the investment opportunities. East African countries or member states or some citizens coming in to invest. How are you going to sustain this if you take office? My f our first objective, first priority, actually, and this is also in our name, because our name is called Democratic Green Party. Mm -hmm. So our first issue to do is to make sure that we have democracy taking root in Rwanda. So here, maybe democracy is a broad word, but we are saying here that we are going to make sure that every citizen has a say. That we are going to make sure that we have bottom up approach, making sure that we consult the people in decision making processes. We are not going to be like it happens now that the, the state makes up some decisions and just throws them down to the people and people start getting disgruntled. Like so which one? No, let's be fair. Like, like let's which say one? now, uh, like yeah. uh, in the agriculture. Yes. In our culture, uh, they, they, they have brought this policy of, uh, I don't want to say it, it is its name because its name it conflicts uh, with the name of our party. There is some, some revolution in agriculture. So you have a problem with that because it conflicts with your but party? No. Okay, they call it a green revolution. Uh -huh. But so it's, you not don't green, it's not green for our party. It's, uh, it's uh, it was brought by Kofi Annan, yes. the, that green revolution. Mm -hmm. they, they have promoted monoculture in different areas, and they stopped people from having uh, mixed family. Land consolidation, you mean? No, I'm talking not land consolidation. Mm -hmm. It's monoculture. Okay. So let's say if people used to have uh, uh, bananas and maybe uh, sweet potatoes and maybe cassava, they tell them now stop, have only bananas, no more thing. And the others who used to have cassava and uh, other things, they say stop everything, have only cassava. So this is happening in Kitalamba, this is happening in Chibungo, it's happening in, in Ruhengeri and Giseni. So what is this problem? When we, we've gone, listen to have been down to the villages. People are complaining. They are not happy. They say now we, we have to sell these potatoes in order to buy cassava. We have to sell this in order to buy beans. And the income is not good enough. So people are not happy. But why are they not happy? It's because someone sits, sat there in the Ministry of Agriculture, threw up down the, the policies, told the mayors to start implementing, and even arrest the people who are not respecting that. Are you sure about it? They even cut this is down. a fact that people have been are arrested because they have refused to, 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 the, to cultivate yes, bananas. The, journals, the newspapers have uh, even saying that even some executive sectors so have So you, you take that people. as gospel truth? No, you, of course. You go down with your team and I say, we went there, we have, we have the newspaper. facts from the ground. I think it may be in Jen's newspaper, which yes. said one, one executive secretary of, uh, of, uh, of Murenje in the northern province was even beating people. Because this you confirm? 
it's I beg your pardon? It's factual. You confirm. It is factual. In, in ijihe.com. No, 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 no. I think it was Indians. Indians. Newspaper, yes, yeah. And yeah, these Kasabu newspapers, they have also said those problems. People they are they're being beaten by the executive secretaries because they are not respecting that. It is happening, you know. It's not right, and we, we, we are against that. So we say now, the problem maybe the, maybe the policy would be good, but when you don't involve people in decision making processes, then it may be rejected. So we, as if we go into government, will promote that bottom up approach. We'll make sure that uh, because that's part of the democracy. We we'll make sure that uh, people have a right at uh, the promotion of the freedoms of expression. Sometimes people fear to express themselves because they think that uh, those local leaders will uh, do something. To them. And yet they will they not do anything. Them in local and, will, and yet they will not do anything to them. You, you know, the self no, it happens. Is it a fault of the government? In, in but in, the local in, leaders, they are part of the government. Mm -hmm. If they do something bad, they are tarnishing the name of the government. No, what it's I'm saying us. is, if, mm. if 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 people have self censorship, yes, you know, self, you know, you, you not nobody has told you not to. No, be, it's because if you say something uh -huh. and you are taken to a local, uh, uh, let's say, cell at the Murenge office or uh, whatever office there in the local. Uh, whatever level, then other people will see. Let's say uh, uh, that that one, that it gives a message to others to say that maybe let me not say much so that I'm not whatever, uh, imprisoned or whatever, or charged for nothing. Even these issues of Mitwe Sante, we have had cases whereby people have been forced to sell their goods, to sell everything to in order to pay for Mitwe. It's, it's, it's true. It's Frank, why, do I have a, in why, why do I have a no, feeling have like there, you're giving myself. me blanket statements? No, 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 you're no. not giving me I have facts and telling me... In my team, in I've this been area. in the myself. Mm -hmm. I have talked to the families. You find that they tell them, sell your goods, sell your whatever, and even by force. Do you actually. have their statements? You, you want you can you a journalist why don't you go do and you and have them I'm asking actually I'm giving you a tip do you just have go them? to Nyagatare and start investigating those mm -hmm. things even if we is taking place there mm -hmm. you will find those problems are there mm -hmm. yes so anyway we promote also pro freedom of the media because that's the number one thing that as I'm saying for our name is Demo so when you talk democracy. of those things that you're saying you will yes. promote so are you trying we to have insinuate that they are not there uh, we are saying well there are some things happening some positive steps taking place like say media we have the good laws now because in 2010 we didn't even have good laws now we have good laws. Uh, we have now what we see at the, at the moment is that in Rwanda, the media is going to be defined by radio stations and online. But the newspapers, they are completely getting off uh, the ground. So the newspapers, they are not being promoted. There is no, uh, we don't see enough effort to, uh, for, from the state or from other state organs to make sure that newspapers can also flourish, like we've seen that the radio stations are flourishing. Should that be the work of the government only? The, the government has a duty. You know, the government actually has made a big mistake. They even scrapped the Ministry of Information. You know, that's the biggest mistake they have done. So no wonder that we have even this problem. There's no mistake. You get the whole busy minister of local government and you give him information, that's the actual political government should solve this immediately. Mm -hmm. But then the media now is, 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 is self-regulating itself. Appointing new minutes of information. No, appointing minutes of information. Yes. Today we are yes. moving away from being governed, but from being regulated by the government. No, Don't you know that? Because, Haven't you heard that? Because that there's we no are now father. We are now regulating yeah. ourselves. The uh, father of the media now, minister of local government, is too busy. We started this week with governors, with what? They don't have time for media. So you still we want the media to be controlled by the ministry? ministry. With, with, because they set policy. Ministry sets up policy. Because if we have people who are qualified, they are in charge of media, they will set up good policies for the media. And these other institutions, the RMC or uh, Media High Commissioner, they will function when they have a, a good parent. But now the parent is too busy with certain children. Mm -hmm. And maybe uh, whatever. So basically, you can't blame. But, but what I can say that we advise President Kagame to put up Ministry of Information immediately okay yes. and if he doesn't uh, then we'll blame him of course <laughs> you like we'll blaming. blame him yes you like blaming we, is it because we you know are it. supposed to blame no we are just made to blame of course th then we'll do it ourselves when we get to power okay but yes. then the problem is what if you never get to power how do you know that? Now I'm asking. No, we will get to power. We are political party. We are not uh, an association. Our fa even if I say those objectives, but uh, another objective we don't say is that we are supposed to get to power to implement what we are saying. Okay. Because what we say, sometimes we are not able to put it into practice because we don't have political power. So we have to get political power to put these things into practice. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Now, let's talk of 2017 yes. in conclusion as we go, as we start walking out of this place. Yes. The issue of, of, of term limits. Many people are already debating about this issue. 
something that the Constitution is not a stone. This is some of the statements that I've heard on this chair, on this show, that it can be changed anytime. We've, we've amended it four times. There's nothing stopping us from amending it again and again to suit what their people want. So what's your position on this? No, no, no. The Democratic Green Party of Rwanda had a, a meeting with the political bureau. Political bureau is a big um, organ. Yes. Party. Um, on, it was, I think, on 22nd November yes. 2014, yes. last year, we took a decision that the party does not support or will not support any proposal to change the constitution. Whether it is the and people that want it changed or the government that wants it changed, you will not of support. Rwanda does not support Whether it's any the, the proposal mm -hmm. to change from anyone the constitution by anyone. And we actually have requ requested the people promoting that, especially Minister Fazil and his party, that, the, that even if it is their right, but they should not take this issue further to the parliament. We actually sat with the vice president of the PDI, as a, the deputy speaker of parliament, yes. at uh, Isango Star, we debated this issue and actually requested him physically, face to face, that they should stop promoting this issue because it is, we think that the constitution should be respected the way it is. Also, we think that it will be against sustainable peace and security for this country. Because we believe that even if we, the Democratic Green Party of Rwanda, we are a party that promotes peace and we are against use of force or armed means, but there are others who are not us, who will not maybe uh, be happy to see uh, a life president. If because when they do that, we will go into a situation of like in Zimbabwe, where we shall end up having a life president. And we have our neighbors here in Uganda, whereby you see now uh, people, they, they are trying, they cannot mm -hmm. remove whatever they have put there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically we don't want to our country to be that. And we don't, of course, want to have bad scenarios like a Burkina Faso or whatever. So we think that, and actually, we say that the president himself, may I have him on record? He said that if he, it reaches the time that uh, is, that is not, does not have a successor, he would have failed. He says that because of that reason, he will not stand. That's what he said, having him on record. So why should those people want to make our president fail? Why do, do they want to make him one of the failures in Africa? So you think it is not the president's wish to stay on, or if the constitution says that time? Because no, this I is, have this him is on record say. where he say that he actually against that. I have it myself on record here. If you want, I can give you that that uh, statement, mm -hmm. recording as uh, actual audio. Mm -hmm. So basically, we think that this is against sustainable peace, as I said, and security. It's against, of course, the spirit of rule of law because uh, with Rwanda. We have never had a chance. You, you have that the record time. here? Yes. It is here? Yes. You want to give it to me now? No? Sure, sure. I'm going to give it to Could you. Could you bring it um, right away? <laughs> as soon as we finish. No, no, no. I, I want it on record. Yes. Is okay. there someone yes. who you want to bring yes. it in? Yes, yes, yes. Let it come. It. Let it come. Let it come. Uh, and as it comes. Come. As yes. As, yes. as it comes. Yes. As it comes. Yes. I would like us to understand properly because there's an argument that yes. we should not be looking at the issue of time limit in terms yes. of years. Yes. But let's look at the track record. That if someone has performed, Yes. Let the people decide and not lock ourselves in number of years. No, 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 no. We're saying that uh, Rwanda has never had a chance mm -hmm. to have a peaceful transfer of power. Mm -hmm. From the time we had the, uh, the monarchy, mm -hmm. the, the monarchy was removed violently mm -hmm. and people had to die. Mm -hmm. And besides that, uh, also. Uh, not only just had, they had to burn their houses and we had problems because of the way the no, but I've asked should, it be there, should the debate be about the track record of someone or the number of years that they've been no, in office here is a you got the record yes play, put it next to your microphone so that we can listen to it so you're just about to play push it up
with that audio clip all the places you go to <laughs> <laughs> no it, no this is the president of the is, is, is it one of your is a, uh, of your uh, weapons is, the president is a uh, person who sworn to respect this constitution he has told people that for me i will not continue well, so why are they pushing him why do they want him to break the law he says that actually they should deserve the worst if they cannot have someone to succeed him so we are telling these parties please this debate, don't say that people are asking you or what we know that no, the president has already said. So don't push because you may bring us into problems. Okay. It's on record. And it's that, not how I was lying. And, and, that, and, that, and yeah. that for you closes the debate on succession policy. And we, we have said that we want President Kagame to be the first person to give us a gift. A gift, a good gift for Rwanda, that Rwanda we can actually transfer leadership peacefully without having one million people dead without having the president going into prison, without having Rwanda going to exile or being killed. So because I've never seen this from the end of the monarchy up to now. So he is actually the only one we say that it would be the blessing from God who is going to show that it's possible we can have peaceful transfer of power and the president can actually stay in the country without being arrested and can be live happily and can contribute and life can go on. We also believe as a party that the country has a strong institutions in place. We have a stronger defense. Uh, that's the military, we have police, we have uh, intelligence organs and others who can protect us. Mm -hmm. We believe that these uh, things can continue through the leadership of another person. So that this cannot be depending on one person, as people are saying that it should be dependent on one person. We believe that institutions are there which can protect this country, that we can move forward, and that way we'll be sure that we shall have sustainable peace and sustainable, even sustainable economic development. Mm -hmm. Because we know that it will be giving hope to the country. So this is a gift we are waiting for. From President Kagame. That's the gift you're waiting for. And whether it is given or not, it's something that you will always. And because support. of that, we yeah. will not support anyone who says they want to change the constitution. Okay. Yes. Now, finally, <laughs> I have said finally when we were going into this debate. <laughs> but then, too many things to talk about, uh, mm. Frank. Sometimes people feel like your voice is. You just noisemakers. Let them talk, and let's keep doing what we're yeah, doing. Yeah, because Listen, we are not wait, yet wait, wait. the decision-making organs, but we shall be there. But then, why so, wouldn't you do mm. make a change mm. from the level that you are, so that people can entrust you with 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 their lives? People can entrust you with something a, and, and say, and "Look, this is what they were able to do even without being in power." But we have done some things even without when we are not in power. But you, you made noise. Know. Your party made noise yes. on the issue of the Lake Rero, calling on investigations. But up to date. There's nothing that has happened. So are you just people who come up, surface when there's an issue, and then go back and say, okay, let's wait for another thing to come up, then we'll come out again and make noise and say, as opposition, we're saying that, investigate that. No, actually, that issue is not yet over. Exactly, that's yeah. what I'm saying. We have not left it. Actually, we even have a stronger case than that because one of our members from Budyasela, uh, our, f our national organizing secretary, yes. Dr. Masini is mm -hmm. still missing. And he went missing in June last year and was in Budyasela. And we had bad reports that maybe uh, he, uh, or people even went to visit there, the site. Yeah. So don't you think, not that everything we want to do, uh, we are saying it, but some things we do them differently. Well, that issue is still in the hands of uh, CID. We, uh, it's still in the hands of uh, the police and uh, we have other means that we have used. We have 
raised this issue so importantly that even you find that the State Department, the U.S. government, they have talked about it, uh, and many other people have raised these issues, the relevant authorities in this country, and you have heard that actually issues now in the hands of the Burundian government who are supposed to do uh, their part. So basically, it's not that we are, we are sleeping, we are actually on still, actually much more than what you think. We are on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have raised other issues. We said last time when we hear uh, issues of Gachiro Fund, we, we, we were saying that the Gachiro Fund the idea is good, but the money, the way they wanted to just put it immediately into government budget, we said that was wrong because we said that this money should be uh, put into a kind, some kind of a bank whereby they can rent this money to the government instead of just using it as a part of the normal government budget. Mm -hmm. And uh, people in the Ministry of Finance they know that we have wrong ideas, mm -hmm. that it's not mm -hmm. right, but finally there is so sense in what we are saying. Now the Gachino Fund is there, which is like a kind of a bank, and now they have started even lending this money to the government. Recently you heard that they bought some bonds in the, from Benel, and they are investing it in different projects, which to become income generating money. So we are happy that at least our idea was given value. It's not only that. Mm -hmm. We are criticizing this Ubudehe scheme, mm -hmm. whereby well, the problem was bursaries, and the Minister of Government and others concerned, they have listened to that, and they have collected this Ubudehe thing, yeah, and okay. uh, whatever. So there, there will be, maybe I would give you other example, it's not that what we said are not listen. They listen. Maybe not everything, because we are not the ones to implement. They are the ones to implement. Some things they give them value, some things they don't. Uh, but when we have some power, let's say in parliament, then we'll be able to do much more. Because now we can only propose, but we don't have the power to implement. So why didn't you go for the parliamentary elections? We were registered two days before the elections. And then? So how can you go into an election? But you days? said you, you we guys... We got registration on Friday, yes. and the deadline for elections was on Monday. So anyway, they say we had only... Saturday and Sunday. How mm -hmm. can you have Saturday and Sunday to prepare for an election? But you said you had already been doing some things, you know, on the but background. You know, and, the, the and then you got this official registration. No, my friend, you forgot something. We spent four years struggling to get the official recognition. It was not a, a bed of roses. It was a real struggle. A political struggle, like the one LPF had, four years. You so you're trying to compare yourselves? It is the same. With the RPF? It was a struggle. Of course it's a struggle. Mm -hmm. You thought it was a, just a walkover. No, it was a struggle. Mm -hmm. Even now it's still a struggle, maybe in a different context. We're not an armed struggle, but a democratic struggle. Yes, we are indeed in a struggle mm -hmm. to bring democracy to this country. Okay. Yes. Super. Thank you so much for your time. It's a pleasure. Uh, my friend Frank Havineza. Dr. Frank Havineza. Dr. Frank Havineza, you insist. Yes. This is a doctorate de degree or you are indeed it's a doctor? Actually, doc doctorate that I got from the U.S. is honorary degree, yes. Okay, so yes. it's a honorary degree. Yes. Not a but doctor I of, it. of injections. Not that one. No, 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 no. no. Not, that Not one. injections. All right. Thank yes. you so much for yes. your time. We appreciate your time on this particular show. The people will decide. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah. Asante Sana yeah. for your time Asante. and okay. have a good one. Thank you very much. There have you. a nice evening. Asante. Also. Thank you so much for watching Asante Sana. One on one comes to an end on that particular debate. It's been hot. And of course, we're hoping that you've enjoyed and you've picked two or three things from the discussion right here on the program. Give us your comments. Use the hashtag 101RW. And of course, we'll definitely read some of them right in the program. Asante Sana. As usual, my name is Eugene Anangwe. Goodbye for now. Asante. 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 Yeah, for your time. Yeah. Okay? Mm. Thank you. Okay, please. Yeah. Hear me, no? Hear me, I tell you, no? Tell me about